Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly analyze the main tactical themes in Arsenal's 2-1 win over Aston Villa. So in today's video, first we're going to focus on Aston Villa's shape, then we'll shift to Arsenal's attacking structure, and lastly we'll quickly glance at the second half changes. So when we break it all down and we do look at the board, we have Arsenal starting in a 4-2-3-1 with Lukonga replacing Elneny and Thomas Partey in that midfield zone, and Aston Villa played in a narrow 4-3-3. So first we'll focus on Aston Villa's shape as they were looking to contain Arsenal from creating chances and early on it was interesting to see how they played down that right hand side. We've witnessed Mikel Arteta's side vary their attacking structure throughout the early stages of this season and one of the main tactical themes in regards to their evolution has been the movement of the left back drifting into the midfield zone. That allows the 3-2-5 with Xhaka pushing forward to ensure that Arsenal have five attacking players and you'll have Xhaka and Odegaard pushing forward forward alongside Gabriel Jesus and then Saka and Martinelli stretching the pitch for large spells. What we ended up seeing happening here was when Tierney drifted into that midfield zone looking to collect possession, you ended up seeing Bailey tracking his movement in towards that area. From there you'd see Villa effectively shift into more of a 4-4-2 out of possession. You'd have Watkins and Buendia in between Lakanga, and then you'd see the Arsenal back three stretch out. From there, what would happen was that if the ball was shifted out towards White, Buendia would close him down and Watkins would drop deeper. And then if Watkins was stepping towards Saliba or Gabriel, then Buendia would stick on Lakanga. In many cases, you would see Udegaard dropping off in towards the inside right to get on the ball or towards the touchline. And if he pushed into that zone, McGinn would step out to close him down. And then from there in that midfield area, if the ball was shifted out towards the wide touchline, Ramsey could shift over or he could track the movement of Xhaka and then you still have the holding midfielder protecting the center of the pitch or if Lukonga got the ball beyond Buendia and Watkins he could step forward to apply pressure or simply track the movement of Gabriel Jesus if he dropped deeper off the center backs. However due to the multiple variation in terms of how they rotate down that left hand side that does result in Aston Villa having to shift their position if need be. So if Tierney wasn't tucking into that midfield zone Bailey would track him wide and then from there Ramsey would pick up Xhaka and Cash would be tasked to deal with Martinelli. There were also situations where you'd witness Xhaka pushing forward to occupy Cash and Kansa and Martinelli would look to get the ball towards the touchline and that's where you would see Ramsey shifting towards that touchline zone to close him down and from there you'd witness Bailey dropping off in towards an inside right position or even the midfield zone to occupy Tierney and then ultimately the same would apply if Xhaka held his position in that midfield area. You'd witness Bailey dropping off deeper to block off the passing lane in towards the midfielder if the ball was shifted out into the path of Tierney Ramsey would push forward and then Cash would shift over to deal with Martinelli and then you'd see the holding midfielder shift laterally to offer protection if one of the Aston Villa defenders were beaten and from there you have Buendia sitting on Lakanga and McGinn tracking the movement of Odegaard in many ways Aston Villa were willing to allow the center backs to build forward and have that 3v1 or at times 3 v2 advantage but they wanted to ensure that Arsenal's midfield couldn't get on the ball and they wanted to neutralize that movement in towards that central midfield area to free up space for Martinelli by ensuring that Tierney or Xhaka dropping into that zone couldn't get the ball freely. Whereas when you briefly touch on Arsenal initially what you witnessed was that they were pressing from goal kicks to ensure that Aston Villa couldn't build from their own back so they had Gabriel Jesus and Saka stepping towards the center backs and then Odegaard dealing with with the deepest lying midfielder. In that case, if Saka was bypassed and Dinia was able to get on the ball, White would push forward to deal with the left back, and then Saliba would step towards Buendia. In that midfield zone, what you end up seeing was that Lakonga would step towards McGinn, and then Jaka would be tasked with dealing with Ramsey. In this situation, they did require help from the wide player, so if Jaka was shifting in towards a central area to cover for Lakonga stepping towards McGinn, then you'd expect Martinelli to drop off to close down Ramsey. And then on the opposite flank, let's say that Jaka's closing down Ramsey and Lakonga couldn't step out to McGinn, then that's where you would need Saka to step forward to cover for Lakonga, apply pressure on McGinn, and if the ball was shifted out into the path of Lucas Dinia, then Saka could push out and block off the passing lane into McGinn until Lakonga stepped forward. And therefore, for large spells of this game, the sole route of success for Aston Villa was when they played long balls into Watkins and he was able to hold off one of the 
the Arsenal center backs. Therefore, when you analyze how Arsenal were able to frustrate this Aston Villa tactical approach, there were a few themes that were successful. The first factor was if Arsenal center backs were able to bypass Buendia and Watkins to get the ball in towards Lakanga, because then he would be free to carry the ball forward and there'd be no pressure towards him and he would simply switch the ball out and towards Tierney if he was able to get beyond Bailey or shift the ball out towards Martinelli to get into 1v1s against Cash. Secondly, then we shift to Xhaka's battle against Ramsey. If you specifically focus on that individual battle, whenever Arsenal or Aston Villa were able to get into good positions from open play, it largely stemmed from Xhaka running off Ramsey or vice versa, and it was Xhaka who was winning that battle in the opening half as he was making runs off Ramsey in towards the half space, and neither the central defensive midfielder or Konsa were stepping out in time to offer much of a threat when Xhaka got into that zone. He was also capable of making runs in towards that penalty area as we've seen this season, and combined with his teammates to place them in legitimate goal scoring position. In this example, you witness Odegaard looking to lead the break with Xhaka running off Ramsey, and when Xhaka receives the ball in the halfway circle, you can see that Ramsey shifting his attention towards him. Xhaka does very well to carry the ball in towards Villa's half and he brushes Ramsey off the ball and from this position he can now slide it out into the path of Martinelli or play it across the midfield for Jesus. What he does is that he slides it across cash for Martinelli breaking down that left channel and when the Brazilian receives the ball he could slide the ball across a six yard area for Jesus or Saka breaking freely. He ends up dragging cash towards him and from there he slides the ball across the center back into the path of Saka and from this position he should be putting Arsenal ahead but he skies his effort wide of the net. And then lastly we ended up seeing Arsenal making underlapping runs in towards the half space behind the fullbacks to get on the ball and it was largely in transition where they were able to get Xhaka and Gabriel Jesus in towards that zone and from there they were causing Aston Villa problems. If you have one of the Aston Villa shuttlers or the deepest lying midfielder tracking the movement of the players going into that area then they were simply capable of dealing with that threat but what we ended up seeing was that there were miscommunication or poor defensive decisions from the Aston Villa backline and when Arsenal broke in towards that space in the penalty area they created their best chances of the game following a giveaway in Villa's third focus on Udegaard running at the center backs and Jesus's movement he looks to slide the ball across Mings into the path of Jesus breaking into right half space and the pass is slightly under hit and focus on Mings and Jesus Mings should be clearing his lines but Jesus does well to be persistent and he sticks with the play and brushes the center back off the ball and from here he's now in a position where he could slide it across the six yard area for Martinelli but Martinez does a very good job of getting his arm out to deny that pass. In the build up to Arsenal's opener, focus on Xhaka's movement beyond the midfield bank into left half space. As Martinelli carries the ball towards Cash, you can see Xhaka calling for the ball. Cash nor Ramsey get tight on Martinelli and he's able to split them to find Xhaka in left half space and when he receives the ball, focus on Jesus' movement and Kansa not getting tight. That allows Xhaka to play the ball through the six-yard box, and while Martinez should do a better job of dealing with that cross, and he spills it into the path of Jesus, who was able to run off Minx, who was ball-watching, and it falls into the path of the Brazilian that puts Arsenal ahead from point-blank range. Down Arsenal's right side, they were unable to pose a threat as Dinha and McGinn did a very good job on Saka when he dropped off deeper, and Odegaard was wasn't making runs in towards that zone behind the fullback because even in the situation where the fullbacks are pulled out and then you have a run from deep from Jesus or one of the shuttlers if Aston Villa's midfield isn't tracking that run then it's down to the center backs to step out and react quickly to close down that thread until the midfield bank retreats however when we shift to the second half there wasn't any major tactical shifts initially you witnessed Bailey starting from the left but he eventually switched over to the right and Aston Villa looked like more more of a 4-3-1-2 with Buendia dropping deeper ahead of the midfield bank to try and get on the ball and we saw more of Bailey and Watkins somewhat operating as split strikers. You'd often see Bailey looking to check in towards the ball to try and get it towards feet and then Watkins spinning across one of the center backs to get the ball in the channels. They relied on their full backs to provide the width and Martinelli and Saka did a very good job of tracking back to close them down and frankly their deliveries from the 
those wide areas were poor. And simply put, outside of Ramsey getting the better of Xhaka with his forward movement in transition or his ball carrying, Aston Villa struggled to create chances and the subs that they made off the bench didn't shift their initial tactical shape. Whereas similar to Villa, Arsenal's best chances in that second half came from their direct play with long balls over the top. Therefore, a lot of their success stemmed on pressing Konsa and Mings and forcing them into mistakes before breaking quickly in transition. And the build-up to their goal simply stemmed from a long ball into the path of Martinelli down that left channel to get him into the 1v1 with Cash. And while he still failed to get the better of the defender, a compilation of several defensive mistakes allowed Arsenal to claim all three points. In the build-up to Arsenal's winner, Martinelli has a 1v2 and he ignores the Tierney overlap and he plays the ball across the penalty area into the path of Tomiyasu. From there, Tomiyasu can take a shot on goal, but his first touch is a bit heavy and it drags out Digne, but now he could slide the ball out into the path of Saka in right half space. When Saka receives the ball, focus on the back post. No one's tracking the movement of Martinelli and Cash is getting dragged in central with no one breaking in towards the penalty area. That allows Saka to pick out Martinelli and because Mings doesn't get tight, you could see that Bailey's focused on Tierney and Saka locates Martinelli free in that penalty area and he clips the ball into that zone and by the time it falls to Martinelli, Cash is now forced to step out and it allows Martinelli the space to direct a tame effort on goal that Martinez can't keep out because it's from point blank range. So as you can see, this wasn't the perfect Arsenal performance, but they identified an area of weakness to exploit Aston Villa's initial tactical approach in the opening half and their ruthless finishing helped overcome adversity once again to remain perfect to start the Premier League season.